The most perplexing story in college football over the past 24 hours deals with Houston quarterback De'Ara King. This is a guy who's accounted for 62 touchdowns over his past 15 games, and he's going to shut it down. He decided he's going to redshirt. It's so interesting to me that he's made this decision, and I find it to be something that we should absolutely dive into here. Joey, what is your opinion of this decision by De'Ara King to redshirt? I think it's terrible for college football that guys that have played football are able to then decide to redshirt later. I think the spirit of the rule was for a freshman coming in that hadn't played much football, get a chance to take a look at it and then make a decision on whether they should, uh, you know, sit out the rest of the season and save that year of eligibility. I think this is awful. But let me say this. He did it the right way. When you look at these guys like Isaiah Prayer from Ohio State of Safety who jump into the portal, they can no longer work out at Ohio State with the team. What he's doing is sitting out, but still giving himself a place and a team to work out with while he's getting ready for whatever it is he's going to do next season. Um, this is basically like punting on this year if you're Houston. Like, we're, we stink. We're one and three. But maybe down the road we're going to be good. And Keith Corbin did it too. His wide receiver, second leading wide receiver, is doing the same exact thing for Houston. And it's, it's going to give us into that realm now. Like, you see the Dolphins, it's different, but they're tanking. But, like, there's nothing to play for now for Houston. So what happens is players can redshirt and worry about the year down the road. Now, listen, Derek King needs to refine his passing game. If he wants to go play in the NFL, and I know that's his hopes, that's his dream, he's not a pocket passer now, and he needs to continue to develop and grow and go through reads, and he's going to continue to practice in Houston. So – it's, it's an interesting twist to the four-game rule, Joey. But guess what? Trendsetters, this is stuff that we saw last year that Kelly Bryant and all those guys that did it, it's going to continue to be a, a story. We're going to continue talking about this, and it's going to happen more and more in the future. This is part of the transfer or the, the four-game redshirt rule, the unintended consequences that, that come along with it, and you're going to continue to see it because skipping bowl games – you know, it's a me culture. That's what it's going to be about from, from here on in. So it's going to happen. So you say, Pollock, that this is basically just where we are. Is this the new college football and we're all just going to have to adjust? Because we're all old men, okay? We yeah. came from a time <laughs> when you stay where you are and you play. So Too bad. Is this, okay, let me ask you just point blank. Do you guys okay. believe he's quitting on his team in 2019? There's no doubt. I mean, that's exactly what he just did. He chose to redshirt, and he's the best option that they have to win football games. And so, yeah, he's quitting on his team this season. Now, it'll be interesting to see whether he comes back to Houston or whether he takes off to go somewhere else. But, listen, this is – Marty, this is no different than the bowl game stuff. You know, people skipping bowl games. They're not big enough bowl games, so I'm done. I think you're going to continue to see people when their team stinks down the stretch and they could come back and they're healthy, but they're worried about their NFL draft stock. Yes, this is the new norm in college football. It's a different day. It's different than quitting on in a bowl game. Those guys are leaving. Those guys are saying, I'm not going to play in that last game. Now, believe me, I don't agree with guys doing that either but this is different this is in a season this is their leader their starting quarterback the star of the team saying no thank you now Pollock you sound like you think he's coming back you sound like yeah. you think he's going to sit out this season and come back to Houston I'm not so sure that's the play here uh, he might just be quitting on not just this season but looking to go elsewhere after this yeah he could be and listen Again, nobody's going to begrudge him because that's the, the world we live in in the society we live in. You're allowed to transfer and you're allowed to go somewhere else and he's going to be a grad transfer next year. And listen, I want to point this out because I think it's a very important part of De'Eric King's story. This kid has been very unselfish and has moved to wide receiver and played early in his career at wide receiver and now is developing at quarterback and not where he needs to be if he's going to get to the NFL. So this is also a part of the process. He played early, moved, and sacrificed for his team I don't know if he'll end up at Houston. He says he's going to be back at Houston, and if he is, awesome for Houston. Obviously, they get Corbin out there, too, and their team better next year. Hopefully, is better. But, um, you know, King also did a lot of sacrificing early in his career. Not only is he developing at quarterback, Pollock, some of the most renowned quarterback tutors in all of the land are extremely enamored with King's ability as a signal caller. I had Oklahoma's opener this year when Jalen Hurts debuted for the Sooners. After that game... This is what Lincoln Riley told of us told us uh, about King after the game. I mean, I said it all week. Derek King is 
there aren't five quarterbacks in the country better than that cat, and that may be too many. Um, he's he's fantastic, and we 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 gave him hell. I mean, he had to move around a lot, and he, I didn't think we really let him get comfortable very much of the day, which was a, we did a good job. He got out a few times, which that's going to happen with that cat. Uh, he, he's he's very very impressive. So Lincoln loves what King can do, and this is the perfect type of quarterback for an Oklahoma scheme, Joey Galloway. What are your thoughts on whether or not he could end up at Oklahoma? I don't think Oklahoma's the move. I, I think that opposing coaches always say that about a guy. And Derrick King has to be tough to stop, no doubt. I, I think what becomes interesting in this situation is you look at a coach like Kendall Browse, who was the offensive coordinator at Houston last season. He's now gone on, and he's at Florida State. And that makes more sense to me. And it'll be very interesting if that's the play here. Derek King stops this season, sits out, and makes a move to somewhere like a Florida State where his former offensive coordinator is now. And then we get into a really interesting area of college football because coaches always move around. If you can get a kid to sit out and then you can get him next season, this is going to be like real live free agency. I need to know this really quickly, Joey Galloway, before I come to the TV and spear you. Yes. Are you saying that Florida <laughs> State go. is a better destination for De'Aaron <laughs> King than Oklahoma? What I'm saying to you is this. It would make more sense to me with this move that we've never seen before where a guy steps out of a, the middle of a season and says, I'm just going to redshirt. You might believe he's coming back. I don't believe that. And I don't believe Oklahoma would be the next move simply because Oklahoma has a couple guys behind and they, they've recruited very well at quarterback and everybody's in line to go mm -hmm. there. You said yourself, the Air King has to develop as a passer. It's going to be interesting if so he goes to Florida Hurts. State with Kendall Browse. Everyone, thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports, more analysis, download the ESPN app. And for live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus. We'll see you there.